Good morning to the planet Earth and all the humans on it. It's the pollinator and as you can probably see, I'm pretty exhausted right now. Um, you know, there's probably maybe two, three, four times a month that I cannot sleep. Because there's just, there's so much going on and there's so much um, happening in my head that I, you know, I lay down and mm, won't shut up. And so, um, anyway, let me just jump into what I wanted to talk about. You know, today is a milestone um, of sorts and, um, well... I didn't want to make this this video on the month before my two year um anniversary on testosterone, but I just had to go for it today um I'm supposed to be hanging out with my uh, my brothers um at a local f t m meeting that I go to in the area. And I realize now that, uh, you know, I'm probably not going to make that because I'm, I'll probably crash from exhaustion after I make this video. <clears throat> but, um, you know, it occurred to me that I'm in unfamiliar territory at the same time, um, very familiar. Um... I think the average age around the internet is in their 30s, people in their 30s, and um, at least ones that are very popular on YouTube. And so, you know, I'm coming from a place that most people don't come from. And what's been anchoring on me lately is the fact that it seems like every 40 or 50 years that black people find out how much hatred and anger and oppression and supremacy and all of that kind of thing is still just as strong as it was when I was a child. Um, I make no mistake, uh, I, I, I tell people that I observed as a child um, the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, the um, anti-Vietnam War. I mean, I saw all of that and um, I experienced a tremendous amount of uh, racism and oppression myself uh, because of where I grew up and and how I grew up um, and how very different my life was from the average uh, black American in this country. And so I got to see things from a vantage point that not many see. And... So when I say I find myself in unfamiliar territory, what I mean by that is that, you know, transitioning from a female to male, um, I see things from a very different perspective than I have all of my life uh, because I did not own, um, well, I wasn't aware that um, I was transgender male. And so, all of this is very new to me. Um, the, 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 the black man part of me waking up sometime last year, <clears throat> I think it was um, September, and it definitely woke up big time when our asshat in chief got elected to the presidency of the United States. I, I already knew that was going to be a mess. I call it hot mess on the back of the stove. You know, the, 
that man is just not right for this country. He does not know how to run a country. <clears throat> and it's very apparent by the things that he does. I mean, his obsession with Twitter and and some of the things that come out of his mouth that just a president would not do or say. But at the same time, he has woken up a group of people who have just been laying in the wait uh, since the civil rights movement and they are coming out just as strongly, if not worse, than they did in the civil rights movement. See, back in those days, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. Um, and so there's a lot of people who are hiding behind their cell phones and their computers and taking pot shots at uh, black people um, around the world. And it's very um, disheartening. Um, and, and what's even more disheartening about it is we don't know the uh, class of these people who are striking out and saying things the same things that I heard when I was young. Um, you know, go back to Africa and, you know, diversity is bullshit. And I mean, you've got these um, trolls, white trolls running all over the internet uh, expressing their fear, which is coming out in, in, in the form of hatred um, about us being in this country. And what they fail to understand about that is that, you know, there is no Africa for us to go back to. Um, we are not, our culture, when we got brought here uh, as to become slaves in this country, we were stripped of our culture, our language, our heritage, our history, we were stripped of everything and there's no possible way. We are African Americans, we are black Americans. There is no country to go back to. You know, our our bloodlines have been crossed by uh, the things that happened during the slavery, which was a lot of raping of our women and, you know, uh, turning the men into studs and killing them. Um, so, you know, there's not many of us that I know of in this country that aren't mixed with whites, um, Indians, um, Hispanics. You know, we, we, we are not African anymore and have not been for centuries. So all this talk about, you know, go back to Africa and all this stuff is very irrational. Um, but, you know, it's typical of the times. So as I sit here, um, I'm not dejected. I'm just very exhausted and tired right now. But I look at the men that as I... Um, embrace my manhood you know I've been looking around at various men that I admire um, that were my heroes um, men that I look up to that you know not many of them are alive but um, you know people like Malcolm X uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Booker T. Washington uh, George Washington Carver, um, athletes like Josh Gibson, uh, Bob Gibson, Willie Mays, um, Muhammad Ali, um, and then you have people like uh, trans men, which, you know, there aren't very many um, famous or influential trans men that are mentioned. I see tons and tons of trans women, uh, but not hardly any trans men. And Alexander G John Goodwin was one of the, the trans men that I admire um, for what he did 
uh, for the transgender uh, pop, uh, community in, in America. And, um, and then I go back to when I was a child and saw the Black Panther movement, you know, Huey Newton, um, uh, who else? Stokely Carmichael. Um, and then I look at some of the other, uh, other people that I have admired over the years, just just because of their stand on black power at the time. Uh, people like uh, James Brown, um, uh, who else can I give uh, Eldridge Cleaver, um, who I think was an author. Um, I even admire Jay-Z right now for him waking up to what he, um, well, just waking up to what's really going on in America for black people. Um, uh, Jackie Robinson, who, who um, you know, was one of the first black men entered into uh, uh, Major League Baseball. Uh, Satchel Page, um, and then I go even farther back to uh, you know Nat Turner, uh, W. E. B. Du Bois, um, Frederick Douglass, um, uh, James W. Johnson, and uh, and even uh, Barack Obama. Who you know? There's a lot, there's a lot of um, people who don't agree with what he did during his pre presidency, but you know that man was a class act, and no matter what anybody says, I think he he did more for this country um, than any other president as far as uh, progression has is concerned. And yeah, a lot of people are mad. A lot of uh, right wing Christians and uh, black people are mad at him that he did not further their cause, um, but he furthered the cause of the LGBTQ community um, around the nation. So it's for that very reason that I admire him uh, because I was one of the benefit benefactors of what he did. So I cannot stand on the side of black people who are, um, upset with his presidency and what he was unable to do for black people. Um, and so, you know, did I mention Muhammad Ali, you know, who stood up and because of his Muslim religion, uh, refused to join the military. And um, even Willie Mays, you know, I make uh, no secret that I grew up in the life of uh, professional uh, sports. And um, I'm trying to think of anybody else who, um, who I look at as the type of men, uh, the type of men, man that I want to model my leadership after. Um, and unfortunately or fortunately, I don't, whichever way you look at it, um, I am not attached so much to the transgender community as I am to the black community. Because, um, you know, although there is a lot of people that are murdering transgender people, there's far greater number of black men and black women who are being murdered in, in, in America and brutalized and um, treated unfairly and oppressed. Systematic oppression affects all of us and white supremacy um, has dominated this country uh, since 
Europeans came here. And so, you know, so again, I find myself in unfamiliar territory and recreating myself to be the kind of man that I want to be, the kind of leader that I want to be. I mean, I'm already moving in that direction, but it's like I'm moving in that direction with a completely different mindset. So it's, it's new. Um, th this way of looking at this country and, you know, while I was trying to go to sleep unsuccessfully, um, I realized that I'm having a very, very, very hard time um, loving the racists that I see going on. And I'm having a very hard time loving uh, white people in general because, you know, what I'm seeing around the country is nothing like what happened during the civil rights movement. See, the, the white people had something to uh, protest, which was the war in Vietnam. And right now, the majority of white people, except one here and one there, are not protesting anything. And so, not even the, um, the oppression of NFL players and standing up for um, police violence against black men and black people in general. Um, you know, everybody's missing the point because they want to miss the point that what he did and what everybody else is doing in the aftermath of Colin Kaepernick is to um, not understand that this isn't about veterans, it isn't about the flag, and it isn't about the racist national anthem. See, people who are uh, complaining about us protesting that do not know all of the verses of the national anthem. And if they actually bothered to go out there and research it and look at all the verses of the national anthem, they would quickly see that it was race, uh, racist based against slaves. Um, and so as a veteran, um, I no longer, even though I'm uh, caught in a weird place because I am a veteran and I did have to uh, salute that flag uh, at attention uh, for the four, first four months of my training in the military. And um, at the time, I didn't know all the verses of the national anthem. But, you know, you would, got, you would get in trouble. When you're under military law, you have to do everything that they want you to do. Um, but that's military law. These NFL players don't, aren't governed by military law. Um, they're exercising their First Amendment right to protest. Um, and they're getting brutalized for it they're getting they're losing endorsements you know they're, they're they've got this idiot of a president telling everybody to fire them if they don't bow down and be grateful for even having a job in the NFL you know those players earned their right to be in the NFL they had to qualify they had to have talent they are being paid to entertain a whole bunch of racist white people sitting in their on their couch. It's it's all an entertainment thing, and as long as we're entertaining them, and we're not uh, bucking the system or bringing uh, politics into that game. Uh, they can criticize and do everything as long as those players put up or shut up and be made to feel grateful they have a job. And, you know, 
that's something that I've heard all of my adulthood that I never, ever abided by. I got paid for my talent. I got paid for my knowledge. I got paid for my qualifications. I did not get paid. Um, I did not get given anything. The, um, what do you call it? The um, affirmative action was gone or didn't apply to me. So everything I did, I did with raw effort. And so I, I feel offended and insulted that people in this country think that I should be grateful that I earned the right to have the income that I had and the job and the career that I had. That is just so um, white supremacist and white privilege working against us. 24 hours a day, every second of the day. And see, if you if people had to swap places with us, shoot, for just, you know, six months to a year, they would, they would change their tone. And they don't know what it's like to live in fear. And they don't know what it's like to have to try to love assholes that hate you. You know, I don't know who in my life does or they don't until they poke their head up and say something. And then I get an opportunity to uh, put them out of my life because I don't want, I, I can't, I have no compassion or sympathy for white privilege. I, I, how can I? There's no possible way that I can feel sorrier for white people than I do for black people when I have been on the oppress uh, the systematic oppression side of that. Um, so, you know, as I look at all these men that I admire and that I want to live up to at the age of 60, and I don't care how old they were or how long ago that they died. Um, they're the kind, they had the kind of courage and the guts and the, um, you know, wherewithal to fight the system that has been oppressing us. Uh, the civil rights movement wouldn't have never happened if there wasn't a problem and the problem wasn't us. <laughs> the problem was um, the Caucasian race wanting to dominate every single country on the planet, including us in this country and keep us there. You know, I noticed um, back in the um, 80s in the 90s that the middle class was disappearing. And that's all part of the system. Um, but what's interesting about that is that the middle class includes a lot of white people. And they don't realize that they're kind of stuck in a, a vicious circle of thinking that their privilege is going to excuse them from what is going to happen uh, when rich people just use them but don't help them. You know, they're, they're trying to get rid of health care laws. They're, 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 there's just a lot of things that I'm, I don't I don't want to say uneducated white people because I think a lot of you know most of the people that voted for Trump were educated and women Buddy knows how he how, how how the idiot feels about women but they elected him and it was all part of keeping that system in place they didn't care that he was sexist they didn't care that he was a misogynist. They did not care. 
it was all a backlash from fear that that we might get out of this vicious circle that we've been put in by white people. Um, and so I'm just, I'm heartbroken that things that people have not progressed from the civil rights movement and, you know, things were quiet for a long time and, um, and then here they all come. Just as racist, just as asinine, just as rude, just treating us as though we're not human beings, you know, tr treating us like shit and then expecting us to like it. And who in their right mind can like this kind of inequality? And nobody, not even them. If they put themselves in our shoes, they wouldn't like it either. And I have literally seen stats out there that said uh, during the civil rights movement that like 63, 73% of black people um, said that the, you know, the civil rights movement was a good thing. And um, something like 43% or, you know, majority of white people, half of the white people thought that Negroes should not be protesting. <laughs> it's like we can't win for losing in this country. If we protest, they get all butt hurt. If we don't protest, then they run all over us and treat us like slaves in a modern day system, in business, in politics, um, in civil rights. We're losing ground. They're trying to take us back to the pre-50s time. And I never in my life in a million years imagined that I would experience the things that happened during the civil rights movement in the 21st century. It makes absolutely no sense to me. And at the same time, it does. These people have not changed and they're teaching their children to become just as intolerant and full of hate and racist. Um, and then there's another class of whites that are just sitting by watching and, and I'm not sure what they're thinking, but they're benefiting from it too, so they don't want to rock the boat. Um, from benefiting from racism. And it's very, very clear on Facebook and it's very, very clear on the internet. Um, I make a lot of, I read a lot of articles and I respond to a lot of articles and I see a lot of the comments of people. Um, recently, a racial problem happened in the uh, United States Air Force Academy where a black man got, uh, I, I think, I don't have the detail, don't quote me on this, but I think um, some white people put um, uh, uh, writing on his mirror in his room or somewhere outside his room to go home nigga. This is 2017 and people are still acting like that. That is so unacceptable. And, and, and what's maddening is that they don't know it's unacceptable or they know it's unacceptable and they don't care. Um, and the general of the academy spoke out and told people that, you know what, if they are into diversity and they can't respect people and they can't respect different walks of life and diversity and all that comes with that, then get out. And I'm going to add my own word. Get the fuck out of the Air Force Academy if you cannot serve your country alongside of different people, different skin color than you, different gender than you, different whatever than you. Um, that's just... 
that speaks volumes that they are perpetuating racism year after year, decade after decade, century after century. Um, that if we do manage to create a movement in this country that can quiet them and silence them and get them to stop being assholes, that they'll just be quiet and then wait for another time in history to come out with the same goddamn thing. Because that's what they always do. Um, and so you don't know who your allies are. Um, because everything is very um, covert now. Um, except with overt stuff like that that happened at the academy. But it's like... And I commented in that in that video of that uh, general speaking to the cadets. And immediately some white guy from nowhere comes out and tells me to go, go do diversity in Africa. See, that's some ignorant shit. We haven't been in Africa and we're not citizens of Africa for the last 200 to 400 years. I, I don't know exactly now, I'm getting conflicting um, data about how long uh, slavery has existed in this country. But, you know, from what I heard lately, it's been only 200 and something years. But still, <laughs> to tell us to go back there is like to tell them to go back to Europe. Our ancestors um, have nothing to do with, you know, where we live. Um, and, and white people are much more in a position of economic uh, power to go back to Europe than we are to go to Africa. We don't have the financial means to pick up and go back to Africa and practice diversity in Africa. So that was that was out of line. That was just so ignorant. Ignorance. And you know what? That man could have been a professor at a university for all I know. I didn't track him. All I did was report him and then block his account from, you know, seeing, stirring up shit in my videos. Um... And then another thing I wanted to talk about is all these monopolies in uh, the United States who are quickly um, also practicing white supremacy. Um, you know, there, there was a time when, when, when I had a career and when I was coming up in that career that all sorts of companies were getting sued for being monopolies. It, there were... Um, businesses and government agencies that made sure um, they couldn't monopolize the United States and other businesses in the United States. And now it's open season for monopolies. They can do whatever they want. They can make up any rules that they want, you know, anywhere from Facebook to Google to YouTube to Amazon to the cable companies to, you know, any business in America seems to be operating from white privilege and white supremacy where they get to call the shots. And if you don't toe the line for them, they're going to cause all sorts of problems for you. But if you toe the line, it tears us up inside. You know, you're still trying to strip us of an identity and of any sense of pride in who we are. Uh, I come from the black power, black power era, and it has never left me. So, and it's not gonna leave me just because they don't like us protesting uh, equality and civil rights in America. You know, all that's doing is fanning the fire. And um, 
and causing a whole bunch of us to start saying, mm -mm, fuck that. We, we don't, we're, we're not going to tolerate this much longer. And, you know, there are some um, uh, white people who fight against, who talk about racism in a realistic way that I really admire. And, but there's just not enough of them to wake up. Um, enough white people to get their head out of their asses and start thinking like rational human beings. Uh, people like Tim Weiss, uh, Dr. Robin DiAngelo, um, and, and, and other white people who are trying to reach you guys to stop being so ridiculously dominating over every other race in this country and us especially you're more afraid of us than you are the other races us and uh, Hispanics um, and even Hispanics will c turn around and call us racial slurs as well so it's a big mess and um, I'm a little tired you know you know, are, are all these lines up here and my hair thinning out up here is be because of all the um, stress I'm under to find solutions. Um, and it keeps going round and round and round in my head, which is why I can't sleep at times. Um, but... I just wanted to make this, I actually wanted to make a video, a fun, more fun video about my transition and some of the things that I've noticed and can share, uh, educate people about, but this issue is what's keeping me awake. Um, I just can't believe the amount of um, racist that Every time, every opportunity they get, they are saying very insulting, um, damaging things to black people in black articles or articles that aren't by black uh, owners. Um, they get in there and just try to tear every black person an asshole. And that is just so... I don't want to say unfair because nobody promised us life would be fair. But how about just? This is not justice, people, to come out and tell us that you're going to put us in our place. Because you know what? A lot of us, you're not going to put us in our place and we're going to start a movement that may not look like the civil rights movement, but it's going to be like that because I belong to many, many, many black groups on Facebook, and I belong to many, many uh, public black publications, and we are just, we're saying the same thing, and we're sick of it. Um, so yeah, all your whining and complaining and snowflake attitude and racist attitude is doing nothing but getting us motivated to uh, do something about y'all um, using social media in whatever way that we can use it um, to let y'all know we are, we're not going to be silent. Uh, silence is consent to let this kind of thing go on and on and on. And it's happening in the black community. It's happening in every community across the nation where people are being silent because they're scared. They're either scared or on the other side, they're benefiting from racism, so they're being silent over on that end. I just, uh, you, the number of people I talk to and I see on Facebook, I rarely ever see um, white people stand up like Aaron Rodgers did and smack the idiot chump upside his head. You know, there's black people doing it, but everybody knows that, you know what, um, white people can ignore them. But when somebody like Aaron Rodgers comes out and says, mm, nah, you're an idiot, 
um, and you're not representative of the people of the United States of America. This is a democracy, and you're turning it into some form of fascism and nationalism and all of it to keep you guys on top um, and squashing anybody who gets in your way or anybody who wants equal rights or anybody who wants civil rights. We didn't ask to be here. And now that we're here, we do not have any place to go where we can, you know, Africa is not, um, most of those countries, all of those countries are third world countries. So to ask people who have been Americanized to go to a place that is less progressive than it is here is bullshit. Um, you just don't want to deal with the issues in any kind of rational way. You know, I honestly think some of y'all are, uh, y'all have a, uh, mental issues and you've got uh, a lot of stuff going on that you claim we have. It's actually you have and you're deflecting it onto us. Um, we are some of the strongest people on the planet to have endured uh, centuries of the bullshit that you've done to us, including keeping us down and oppressed inside of a systematic uh, type of oppression where ain't a chance in hell we're going to get out of it unless other white people um, like Aaron Rodgers rally and say, also say this is not acceptable. And the more of them that do that, the more you racist will go back in the closet and shut the fuck up. We really need y'all to take a chill pill, have several seats, and shut up. You don't make any sense. You sound stupid and ignorant. And if you don't care, that's okay. Other people are noticing you and noticing how ignorant you are. Um... I would just think you'd want to be a better person than to be ignorant, uh, which spurs on hatred and fear and anger. Um, your ignorance is unfounded. Uh, the government is using you. The rich are using you. And without you, they don't have any worker bees to make them rich. But y'all ain't paying no attention to that. Anyway, I'm about done. Um, I really wanted to spend this day with my brothers. Um, you know, celebrating my uh, another milestone and hanging out with them. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do it. You can see my eyes are wanting to go to sleep. But I want to get to a place of love while not loving what is happening in this country. And I am going to figure out a way to become the kind of leader in this country who isn't taking advantage of other black people through capitalism. Because I see a whole lot of black people doing that too. You know, come on, I'll help you if you pay me X amount of dollars a month or pay me a fee, a whopping ass fee that doesn't guarantee you're going to get any kind of success out of it. And so, you know, what I'm going to be doing is going to be doing it without charging the most um, economically depressed and oppressed race. I don't even want to say race anymore. Just... Black people are the most oppressed, and I can't believe that other blacks are taking advantage of that and, and justifying it somewhere in their head that if we make them rich, that they're going to help us. You know, all these people I mentioned, none of them charged money to help people, to help their people. Uh to help the black community around the nation or in your little part of the world. 
in your little part of America. Um, except the musicians, you know, they have to charge for their money. But I just hope things... I'm starting to see some movement, and I'm very, very glad that there are some uh, Caucasian people in America who are starting to say, no, the things are fucked up, and everybody needs to, to, to chill out and stop it. Stop it. We can't stop it. Take your ass back to Europe, and maybe the people that are left here can pull this nation back together, and we need to get rid of and silence Trump. Uh, Point blank. That man is incompetent and he's uh, he's a hothead and he just doesn't know. He doesn't care what comes out of his mouth. So I'm up for impeaching him. And um, so, yeah, I sign any petition I can find to impeach that idiot who, who, who needs to be silenced. But anyway, I hope everybody has a good Sunday. And for the guys who were expecting me at that that meeting today, I apologize for not being able to uh, attend. Um, I'll, I'll make up for it somehow. I'm just too, I just, I have had a sleepless night and I will be no good uh, trying to get all the way, an hour and something minutes away from where I live to get to that meeting with no sleep. So I must sleep. Anyway, I just want people to know that I, I do come from a place of love. And um, while hating what's going on and hating every rotten thing that ever happened to me around the color of my skin, I can't help but have disdain and, and dislike and even hatred for some of the stuff that's happened. Um... It will all become very clear in my book when I publish it. Um, but I'm doing it to inspire people and to motivate people um, not to whine about what has happened to me, but to tell my story. And hopefully people will be moved and inspired and touched in everything that I want this book to do. Um, so, peace love and soul.